short video I'm going to show you how you can create a model in Azure ML Studio uh, as you know Azure ML Studio is a, a Microsoft Cloud Data Science tools that help you to create model very fast it's a drag and drop environment you create a model and then you create a web service out of that model and call that model in your Power BI so you have data in Power BI and you use the API in Azure ML Studio as a tool for machine learning and applying machine learning on top of that. So I'm going to show you the process and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, so as I explained, I'm going to show you how you create an API in Azure ML Studio and then consume that API in Power BI without writing any R code in Power BI. So I, as I explained, there's possible to write R in Power BI, but I'm not going to do that. To create the model, I'm going to consume the API that I'm already having Azure ML. The example that I'm going to talk about is for Titanic example is a traditional example that in most of the data science they use. As you know, there's a uh, there's a we have a data set about the passengers uh, that actually they survive or not survive. We have some information like their age, their gender, their passenger class, are they survive or not, and they are going to predict if a person with a specific age, gender, and passenger class is going to survive or not so to do that i need to go to my uh, uh to my azure ml studio so i'll go in there and uh here i'm going to create a new experiment for this purpose uh so in this is the environmental azure study as you see i'm going to the link studio.azureml.net uh, there are lots of video on how to do that, how to create a model. I'm very fast going through that. So this is my experimentation area. I'm calling as Titanic Video API. And I'm going to bring the data set. So this is my data set that I have. If I just want to show you. So uh, it's actually it's a, about 800 rows. And uh, we have information like age, passenger class, uh, the gender, and are they save off and the other information. For this purpose, uh, we are not going to look at all of the information that I have. I'm just going to look and uh, focus on four main columns, survive, passenger class, sex, and age of people. For this purpose, I need to remove the other. So I'm going to use the component select column. Uh, in database so just get some data that I needed uh, from there so I just need survey passenger class ginger and the other so now I have a data set also you can kind of uh, I'm going to split the data for the purpose of the training so I split the data to it's not the accurate one maybe you should kind of do much more data cleaning uh, but the purpose is not to kind of learning the azure ml study i just want to create very one fast and you see that how we can consume there so i split the data i'm going it's a two classification problem because we are going to see people survive or not so i'm use one of the algorithm here then i'm going to train the model and also score the model okay so i get the data from here and i need to specify which, which column i'm going to predict that is survive column okay so this is a very simple model that i have so i get the data select some columns I choose the algorithm named to class decision forest to predict people survive or not. I'm trained the model and then I'm going to see the result. So this is a very fast uh, machine learning process that I have. As you see, this is my input and this is the prediction. Now I'm going to create a web service. So as you know here, as you see in the bottom of the page, we have predictive web service here. So I'm click on that. It's going to create two nodes for me, one node for web service input and the other one for output. So I'll just need here. Uh, however, I need to do some change 
here. So this is my input. That means that person, the uh, user, the end user, need to provide all of this information. That is not actually fair. We don't want the ticket or the other. So I need to do some data transformation here. Also in the output, if you look at the output here, if I run it, you will see that we have some information about the initial data that we have that was passenger class and age but in output we just want to see the probability so what i'm going to do i'm going to select some column and remove some of other column so i need to select column one for input data so i just remove the link here remove the link here i put it here and here i need to remove uh, i just need to kind of exclude the other column so i'm going to exclude the serve uh, the survive because we not going to provide that and that's a uh, kind of the result and for the output also we need to remove the other column so uh, here i'm going to choose that i just need to Exclude the uh, the information, or you just include the just the score and the probability. So that's okay. So now I run it again to see that what input and output actually we have in our web service, what input user should provide, and what output they will get. So every time you change here, change the API, you need to actually run it as you see here we have two tab here so this one's my, my original training experiments and this one is for creating web service so now if you look at the uh, input and output for the web service you will see that that's great so people just provide that one and for the output also to just see the score and the other oh okay i think so i did a mistake here mm. So yeah, there's a, another one. I don't want this thing. So yeah, it should be okay. So there's a possibility to just run the node that we have. So this is the kind of my API. I'm going to create my API and publish my API now. So here, uh, I just run it again. Oh, it needs to be run totally. So I'm just wait that it run. So now it's actually run. I'm able to kind of uh, see that. So again, uh, let's look at the result here. So as you see here, we just have this output, which is perfect. Now I'm going to deploy the web service. Just click on deploy web service. I'm using the classic one. And it's going to create the web service for me. And that means that uh, people uh, they couldn't see the behind the scene they just provide the data and they get the answer so for example i said that there are passenger class two she was a female and her age was 21 and it's actually is create one so it says might be 37 percent is not going to survive okay so this is the actually the api here now create this api i want to use it in power bi so uh this api is in production that means that everyone can use it they just need to connect to this api they provide the right data as you see here and they get the answer there's a possibility also to analyze it in excel i'm not going uh, to do that i'm just going to check here uh, for that purpose i'm going to the power bi my power bi desktop i'm going to the power query environment and i'm import the titanic data set through that so just let me bring the titanic data set okay so i have a data set here files my data set it should be a titanic one so this is a titanic data set and i'm going to kind of apply the uh apply the code over there so let's see that how is actually possible okay so i'm going to bring the data there so this is my code i will explain that was the r uh, so for doing that i need couple of the 
transformation first of all i need to just have the input for that so i just need passenger class gender and age and i need to remove other columns so here i'm going to write the r code not just for machine learning for calling the api from azure ml so i'm click on here and i have some code so let's see that what i need from my azure ml i need to go to the azure ml go to the setting and in the setting under the workspace id you see that i have an id here so you need to copy that one and also you need the authentication token so under the setting authentication token and just copy paste the primary authentication token then you need to back to your power bi to the R code, so assign the authentication token and uh, workspace ID to variables. Uh, put the service name that you have. So I need to check my service name here. That's for the another one. So I'm back here. Go to my web service that I'm recently created. This is the Titanic video one. So I need to copy the name exactly as it is. So this is the name here back to the code and you see that i need to paste it here it should be the same just it has different name and i use the azure ml library so uh, there is in azure ml library there is a function name workspace this workspace is uh, responsible to connect into the azure ml environment so it gets the workspace id and authentication then actually uh, we are going to provide the uh, kind of consume that one so we pass the service name and the data set to the service and the output will be actually show us in the data set or you if you want you can change the output let's see that how it's actually work so it's asking me about edit to edit permission to run the code so it's going to ask me i'm it's going to uh, apply our code on my data set and i'm happy to do that so just see that how it actually work so it may take a bit of time because it's going to connect there so as you see it comes over if i click on table i'm able to see the inside of the code there so as you see here, this is the code. So it says that for the data set, what's actually, what is the data? The good thing is here is that you can actually access to the original data set. So here, I this is my output. I can create, I can write some R code and says, okay, I want the real information that I have. So uh, yes, data dot frame create a data frame contains of ds and my data set the uh actually the columns that i have so that's actually the column that i have and see the result there so again it's going to run the code just wait till it is so now as you see here is actually if I back to the ds you see that i'm able beside the probability i'm also able to see the other information about passengers so you see that here you do not need to write any r code so you just the only r code that you need to provide that's the standard one provide a wid that's a workstation id authentication id the service name the library that you have uh, and actually consume the service name and the other so it's a standard so that means that even you can create a function in power query to just call the and get the information from there for every time that you are going to use so this is the all and you can show the result in any um, condition that you want So this is a process you see that how easily I can create a model in um, Azure ML Studio I apply and kind of create a web service out of that and then I use that web service to call that API call that modeling power query uh, that's so easy actually that's a, another pro another way of actually using Azure ML in Power BI without writing any R code there uh, actually you write the R code but not R for machine learning you just write some kind of uh, using the codes just to call the 
API. I hope that you enjoy and I hope that you can able to use it for the, uh, your scenarios and thank you.